Here we are again, back to peg 118 on the Syndicate Lake. I um, had two choices today, go down the river um, or come back to Gold Valley on the Syndicate Lake. And I decided to come back to this peg 118 that I fished a couple of days ago in the match, just to try and fix a few things that I think I did wrong and, um, and get comfortable. Fishy matches is one thing, you know, having the ability and the time to practice to try and improve upon your mistakes is another. So that's what I'm looking to do today. A couple of things where I think I went wrong um, last week, a um, couple of days ago, when I was fishing the pole, I fed whilst I had the pole rig in the water. I think that caused some foul up because that's what was getting me the problems with the F1s. So I'm looking to fix that today. But the big issue was the distance on the feeder. Um, as you can see, um, in front of me, um, at 13 metres, there's a little bush. Then there's three clumps of reeds. And I was fishing to the third reed. And I spent most of the match commentating that I thought the fish were between the reed and the tree and the tree and the rope. So I fixed it today. I've got two rods with me. Uh, one's 24 grams. It's clipped up to the third set of reeds. I'm going to start there again. Um, and then the second rod is clipped up just past the tree. So it's between the tree and the rope. Um, it's a decent it's a decent cast I'm gonna stand up to do that chuck but I'm gonna start again by fishing just over there so here we are we're in five minute casts 8.53 um, let's catch a fish I got here first thing this morning I was the first one at the gates at quarter to seven which is, a, which is an early start for me um, to get down here for that time but I was here at quarter to seven then I had to uh, stand around having a quick chat till about quarter to eight because it was dark. <laughs> the three clumps of reed are here. They're like one, two, three, and I'm fishing off the end one. And then you've got the tree, which is about another five, six meters. And then the rope about another five, six meters after that. I also think what I'll do at the end of the match is I'll walk up the bank and I'll um, take a little bit of extra footage on the um, on the phone so you can see exactly where I'm talking about. So this is where I think a lot of the fish are. I think they're in here. And then walking backwards then. This is the tree in the water that's it and then that's the third rush over there so they're they're along this bank here but predominantly I think the fish are hiding in this area here between the last tree and the rope I'm gonna feed that margin line earlier today at the bank just going to feed it with red maggots four or five maggots uh, two lots each time and maybe have a look at it at 10 o'clock the lake's behaving a little bit different and the fish are behaving different on the match a couple of days ago I think from about 20 minutes into the match 30 minutes into the match I was seeing fish moving from the third reed I don't know you won't be able to see it but the third reed um, in between there and what I'll call the tree and then in between the tree and the rope there was fish moving I was fishing short so today I was going to come and fish short again and if there were signs of fish moving in the, the areas further, then I was going to fish to them. Now, I've sat here for the last hour and I've not seen a fish move in those areas at all. Now, it's an hour before, so the match would have started at 10 the other day. And I started fishing at 9. So that's one difference. There's no pressure on the lake from the other side, so that's another difference. 
and there's been a grebe working the area between the tree and the rope and into peg 119 so there's some differences that have been happening it's not exactly the same so i don't know how that's going to impact things and the other thing that i wanted to correct was the fact that i was fishing to my left hand edge the other day and i was feeding whilst i had the rig in the water i think that caused some foul lookers I had a conversation with coach mark afterwards and um that was the consensus so i want to be a little bit more disciplined in feeding and then putting the rig over on that left hand margin which should reduce the foul lookers and in theory that mean i catch more fish i'm just going to keep priming that margin line And because every day is different, I'm probably going to go down there and look some carp. <laughs> right. Well, that's that moved off. Hopefully, okay, well, there's the fish. Let's have a little look. First fish of 2024 is an F1. Perfectly done, no messing about. In it goes. There's the fish. Get rid of the leaf. Beautiful chunky F1 that is. Summer. Four fishing four foots on the pole. They're probably not sorry off two and a half, three pound each. They're just solid.
seven for seven. Another four pound fish. Might not be foul. Oh no, eight for eight. I had to bite and then thought that was going to happen. I think that's proper tonight, ballots maybe. What I need to do is I need to come off this and rest it. It's good, but this is messy now. It's on. So, no, come on. Oh, okay. All right, I'm gonna call that day. I'm not gonna throw one in. So, we'll come off this. That's the right thing to do. Rest it, and then we'll come and have another look. That was pretty good, like that. It was a nice little runner fish. No signs of fish on the short line. We'll go out on the long one. Then we'll do 10 minute casts and rest that pole line. for a good half an hour and go and see if we can get some more fish out of it. I think that was a good illustration how the line can start really good and start to peter out and then you know just get troubles with it and the best thing is to just come off it. I had eight fish for eight casts, clean bites for about 24 pound of fish. And then the ninth fish has come off, the tenth fish has come off, the bites have become less positive. And there's more chance of foul looking fish. And that's when you just gotta say, it's more productive or I can recatch faster if I just come off. And hopefully what I'm gonna show now is I'm gonna leave it for 30 minutes. And I keep feeding it and then go back on it and get some decent bites again. There's an indication on that on that tip, look like a liner. But after I've had that bite and now a liner, I'm very confident that's going to go. No? Oh, is that a bite? Is that a bite? Right. It's come off again. Okay. What's that all about? Take him a pellet. That's unusual. All right, so they're long then. No doubt about that. But it's two fish, anyway, two bites, 36. Now I've seen a fish top. Yeah, I wonder if it was just fishing a bit early today. 
in terms of the carp or maybe in the wrong place maybe they're just not so active fish topped nearest where I'm fishing now now I mean I've rested that pole line for 30 minutes give or take a minute which is plenty long enough I think and I'm going to find out if it's not fish top by the rope so yeah, I've only seen fish movement our fish bellying right out of the water um, I've only seen fish movement out there since about half ten half ten it started I started fishing at ten to nine and the match start the match on the gold lake started at 10 o'clock and it was only about half past 10 did i see the signs of movement out by that rope or out towards that along that line in that area so we'll go on the pole again and then when we go back out on the method we'll go long again i think Oh, there we go. How oh, have I missed that? How <laughs> oh, have I missed that? So four dropbacks on the short line, and I've missed three bites on the long line. Strange goings on. Right. Let's not worry about it get back out on the pole three maggots size 14 uh, smwg hook from guru i'll be catching carp up to 20 pound on these hooks they're absolutely brilliant i'm fishing 019 to 017 hook length I've got one number 10 dropper and a dirty bulk of five number eight and that's my pole rig I'm going to ship the pole out. Play feed twice. Double six maggots just in the area where I want to fish. I'm trying to be a bit more accurate this time. Drop it over their heads. And hopefully, get a bite straight away. There's the bite. Okay. One for one. There's my bite. That's definitely trying to get under that bush. No mercy. Black Hydro working really, really well. Rubber, another fish. Slightly smaller. Then I'll be cracking up one to be catching on New Year's Day. Let's <laughs> go. 
definitely feels like there's not as many fish there though. You know, the bites are not as quick. But there's fish there. So we'll have a cut on the couple and then we'll come off it. Oh, makes me want to go back out for another one now. That was what, three, this is now four, 58, 12 fish. I would guess a three pound, if not close to three pound on average. I've got a couple of bigger ones. I really think I've not taken into enough consideration just how many F1s have gone in here and just how big they are over the last five, six years or something like that. They've been going in here maybe a bit longer than that now. We'll go for another one. It's trying to be good. It's a decent spread, but now tighten it up. It's looking nice. Doing the confidence that when I go out, the fish are going to be concentrated on the spot where I'm going to drop the bait. Get me a quick bite. I am waiting though, if you were to put the two times I've come in on this bank side by side next to each other, the amount of time it takes is longer. There's still more fish there and I think I'm going to stay on it a little bit longer. Resting it was absolutely the right thing to do. No, I looked at it, but I think it's a small fish. Okay, oh, I don't know. It's angry fish. Certainly worth catching. That bait was taking a long time. But that's probably one of the bigger F1s I've caught. Come off that now, I think maybe that's another five fish I've had. Of that line. Oh, 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 that's a fish. Right. Now I'm standing up and I'm just playing it directly. It's thumping against the rod. But it's not gone into the bank actually now going towards the middle of the lake. Now I'm going to play it down to the side. It's out over there. Okay, well, one for one out of the uh, out of the peg, no problems. Is that that is a giant F1. That is not a carp. The size of that fish. I say it's a giant F1, I know they get much bigger than this, but 
Look at the size of that thing. See if I can hold it up, even if it's for that other camera. Give my wolf the back. Let's see what the fish came with that. Right. Come here. Huge F1. It's done anyway. In terms of I managed to get up, did it, stood up. I felt the right thing to do. So this is this point of the, the day, I guess, in the video that says if you're watching this um, either now or later on and you're not subscribed to the channel but you're enjoying what you're watching and if you could hit the subscribe button I'd really appreciate it it helps with the channel visibility it's a free way to support the channel growth and you know I really appreciate that stuff thank you but if you are subscribed if you can just hit the like button that also helps with the visibility and uh, interaction with the channel and the stream so that would all be great so we're either going to catch loads down here now or I'll have completely ruined it by chucking the ground bait in and the extra bait but that is what I'm trying to see do I bring the carp in or do I kill a peg off if I just catch the same amount of F1s then I'll be genuinely surprised okay bye Carp, definitely carp, definitely carp. <laughs> oh, beautiful. <laughs> Just have a check of that hook bait. I'm sure that was a carp. See, now that's making me wonder what you should do here. So I fed it for an hour. I'll do a little summary. I fed this line for an hour and a half. No, I'll try again. I fed this line for an hour. Went over it, had eight F1s and eight chucks. And a foul up two. So I had about 24 pound in 20 odd minutes, about 25 minutes maybe. I then rested it for half an hour came back over it had four or five more f1s um but it felt like it needed to be rested for longer so what i did instead was i put a big ball of ground bait over it another loose let's twist it again i put another uh, pot of ground bait loose over it and half a pot of maggot or plenty of maggot and then I fed it 10 maggots twice every five minutes for the last half an hour the intention of trying to attract a carp or carp like more than one um, and not f1s and I'm pretty sure that, that first one was a carp there's a little indication then if it's a carp I'm sure it'll be a proper bite but the goal was to see if if I put a lot more bait in would I attract carp or would I just kill it off And I'm fairly sure that first fish was a carp. Rig's going on. No. I don't know, but you know, I think that maybe. I think maybe that that ground bait has attracted a load of F1s or dragged a load of F1s out from under the bush. 
and it's holding them there. So I'm not going to feed over it this time. I'll have some fun with this fence. Look, look, it's not even fighting, look. That F1. <laughs> it's like, oh, I've given up already. <laughs> Pulled that out of it. Hmm. I think that was in the mouth. That was an interesting fish to pull out of. I saw a fish flash at the top of the water then. That might be my carp. Don't make me regret that. Don't make me regret that. Come here. It's a lot of black hydro that is. go. Maybe it did help get a proper carp in the peg. Oh, I don't know. Maybe it did. Maybe it did. I I can hold that for sure. Very lean carp. I was going to go straight back out on the feeder, but I'm going to go back out for another fish. I think the ground bait has worked to bring some carp in. What I'm not sure about is, is it worth it versus catching the F1s? 
But maybe they run out. Maybe they dry up. But just put four maggots on this time. I think this is going to go, it's going to go straight away. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, not that quick then. Oh, two packs of maggots. Fed pretty accurately. Let's give that a go. What's the time? Well, I've had my five hours. If if it was a match, I've nearly had my five hours a couple of minutes and I've caught a few not enough though so I think what it's got to be right now fishing to that third rush pile seems to do nothing there's definitely fish long and fish in this edge but you need to prep it for an hour plunder it for 30 minutes get off it back long for 30 minutes and maybe if you fished it like that that might work really well or just sit long and catch bigger carp and try to do that type of stuff but there's definitely be fish to be caught on this left hand edge now well, that was a proper bite Great fun, I must say. And great fun to be doing it in this peg. <laughs> right. So I think this might be the last fish of the day. I'll have my five hours. And I've foul looked it. <laughs> what do I do now? Do I go and try and catch another one? We'll catch another one now, haven't I? The hook's just pulling out of them, I don't know why. I think it was just pulling out of them. This isn't valid. Right, last fish of the day. So I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. Everyone that tuned in in 2023. The start of 2024 in a fantastic way, catching loads of fish. And uh, I hope to see you all again soon. Maybe next weekend. Or this weekend. Monday. <laughs> that do for me for this session at Gold Valley Lakes the return to peg 118 following the match I had here the other day we had a fantastic day catching loads of F1s up this left hand bank I've had a couple of carp as well um, the peg's not fishing as I would traditionally expect but um, I catch these fish all day long look at that that's golden fish to finish at gold. Catch you on the next one.
See you later.